And literally, it takes me less than two minutes to scan a whole roll of 36 images, which is absolutely incredible. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to 2020. This is the first video that I film in 2020 and it's about scanning film, how I scan my film. Because these days, shooting film becomes more and more popular, but a problem that a lot of film shooters face is getting digital scans from their negatives. You probably know that getting good scans can cost a lot of money and in some places there isn't even a good lab around so you have to send in your film which makes the whole process even more expensive. And it happens that you get your film developed but the scans they don't turn out the way you hoped they would. Um, it happened to me that I got scans back that were way way too contrasty or they were cropped so badly that the photo was pretty much unusable. So the best way to get around this is to develop and scan at home so you have full control over the whole process. I've made videos already about developing film. Um, I will link a playlist up there so you can go and check it out after this video. You developed your film and now you need to scan your images and what people usually do is they use a flatbed scanner which is okay, but it won't give you the best results if you're scanning 35 millimeter frames. So what I use is a digital camera and a macro lens. Let me show you what I use. Maybe this can work for you as well. First of all, you need a digital camera. And in my case, it's the Sony a7 III um, with a macro lens. It's not really a macro lens, it's just a manual lens. And I use some extension tubes. Maybe you can see it over here. And so this will turn the lens basically into a macro lens. Then you need a light panel, something like this here. Um, this is an LED panel and it will shine through your negatives and so you can photograph them. Pretty handy and very inexpensive. And oh, by the way, I will link all the products I use in the description box down below so you can uh, go and check them out. So you need this here. And also you need something to mount your camera to. You can use a tripod, which would be the obvious way to do it but it's not easy to set up and it takes a while and so I picked up something much better for this job. This guy here, it's pretty big and heavy. You can get this in smaller size but um, that was available so I picked this guy up. This is um, a copy stand and the camera will be mounted here so it's very easy to set it up and align the camera perfectly so that's what I would recommend using. So the next thing that you will need is something to mount your negatives to and something like this here, a film holder. This is what I used uh, in the beginning. It's pretty much, it's a film holder from um, a flatbed scanner, an Epson flatbed scanner. It works, but it's pretty flimsy and um, it takes a lot of time to use uh, because you can mount film stripes here and this holder can take uh, 24 frames. It's not the best process to use and the thing is it's not easy to get the negatives really flat which is really important but with this because it, it doesn't put much pressure on the negatives um, it's not ideal so you have to make sure that the negatives are flat before you put them in here otherwise you won't have a good time scanning your images. However there's an almost perfect solution for this and this product is this guy here. This film holder by a company called uh, Negative Supply and full disclosure they sent me this uh, this negative holder over to check it out and that's what I was doing for the last two weeks and I've scanned a lot of film with this so I got a pretty good overview how it works and if it's any good or not. So like I said they sent it over but I will still give you my honest opinion on it. So now what's so special about this? And the thing is, and that stands out, this thing lets you scan a whole roll of 36 images in one time. So you don't have to cut it into, into stripes, which is very handy. And literally it takes me less than two minutes to scan a whole roll of 36 images, which is absolutely incredible. And if you shoot a lot, this will probably save you hours in the long run, which is pretty, pretty nice. And this device has more benefits because it's fairly heavy and it has some rubber feet. When you put it on the, on the light table, it will just not move around. It will stay put, which is pretty good because then you can make sure that uh, every time you take a photo of, of a negative, that it will stay in the same spot, which is a different story when you use this here uh, because the camera is fixed in a fixed position and every time you want to advance to the next frame, you have to move this. With this device, 
you don't have to do that. And that makes the whole process fast, very efficient, and the results are outstanding because also this will help to keep the negatives flat, which is absolutely awesome. So now let me quickly set this whole thing up so you get a better idea why I like this so much. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, mount the camera onto the copy stand. The screw here goes directly into the tripod mount. The next step would be to place the light table and the film carrier below the camera. But because the light source is larger than the film holder, uh, it can happen that there's light spilling into the lens and that can cause some issues. And to avoid that, I cut some cardboard. I place the holder in the middle and I seal the edges with uh, some black tape. Now I can finally put the holder in place below the camera and I'm pretty much ready to start scanning. The only thing left to do now is to adjust the framing and also the focus of the lens and I can scan roll after roll, no problem. Now let me show you what the whole process of scanning looks like. You feed the film in through the opening in the front with the emulsion side facing down. So you basically you can, so you can read the text uh, that is written on the side of the film. Then dial the knob clockwise to advance the film until you get the first image you want to scan. My settings are usually 1 6th of a second, ISO 100 and F8, but that depends on how bright your light source is. I usually try to advance the film to the same position in between each shot, because later on in Lightroom it makes it a lot faster to frame each photo. One advantage of the negative supply holder is that it keeps the film flat, like I've mentioned before, and that is a huge bonus over other film carrier. In case you have film that has already been cut into stripes, don't worry, you can still use the device, but of course, it's not as fast anymore, but it gets the job done. Now I've mentioned it before that the negative supply film holder is almost perfect because there's two issues that I um, found out and number one is it does not take X-Pen negatives, um, it's not big enough. But the good thing is there's a way around this and I will show you later when we are in Lightroom. And now let's address the elephant in the room and that is pricing because this device here is more than $300 which is a lot of money for a film holder basically, that's what it is. But after using it for a while and scanning 40 to 50 rolls, um, I've realized that this saves me a lot of time and time is something most people don't have. So it might be okay to spend $300 for this. In return, you save a lot of time and it's the ease of use of this device is absolutely awesome and it makes a lot of fun scanning with this. So maybe if you consider this 300 bucks is not too bad but the thing is if you shoot like 50 100 rolls a year okay fine but if you only shoot a roll once in a while then it's probably not worth spending that amount of money but in the end it's up to you that's something you have decided but let me know in the comments down below if that would be something for you or if, if it's just simply too expensive if you want to check it out i will leave the link in the description box down below and also in the description box down below is the link to my zine 28 with a ton of street photography that I shot with my Leica M6 in Cairo last year. And there will be no shipping cost for the two more days until January 31st. Um, you will find the link also below in this video. All right, guys, we've scanned all the film and I've already copied all the negatives to my laptop. And now it's time to convert them. And the software that I'm using is Adobe Lightroom and a plugin called Negative Lab Pro. And in this case, I'm using version 2.1.2, uh, which is the newest version that came out, I think one month ago. So let's hop onto my laptop and check out the raw files. All right, guys, I'm now in Lightroom and let's start with the first image, this, this one here. Let's jump into the develop module. And the first thing that I will do is um, take care of, of the, the white balance and I sample from the border here. 
then I will crop it down and I have to make sure that there's no film border in the frame. That's really important. Otherwise it will throw off the software while converting it. That's pretty much it. Um, now we'll start Negative Lab Pro and this is Control N as a shortcut here on the Mac. Okay, I'm now here in um, Negative Lab Pro. And what I can do here is now I can just simply uh, press convert negative and it will convert the negative and it will give me a rough idea how it looks like. Okay, this is a bug. Um, okay, now here's pretty much um, the scan and it's converted. It's already looking okay. Um, it did some adjusting here. Looks pretty much all right. But what I will do now is, because I don't want to just convert one, I want to convert more of them, those, because this will speed up the whole process. But for this, I need to do one thing. I need to sync all my settings to all the other images. And now it comes in really handy that they were taken at the same spot. As you can see, there's no film border in there. This is perfect. That's one benefit of using um, the negative supply holder because now I don't have to adjust anything. And now I will get back to a negative lab pro, um, control N. And now, as you can see here, it says convert four negatives. So that's what I will do. And also you can here, you can um, also choose a different um, scanner, but I usually use the frontier. Um, in case I have black and white images, of course, I use black and white, otherwise I pick the frontier. So let's convert them. It takes a little bit of time, not too bad. And almost done. Come on. Okay, that's about it. Same bug as before. Okay. So now, as you probably can see already down here, um, all the negatives have been converted to positives and what I can do now is I can convert them into um, TIFF files and add them to a new subfolder which is something I usually do. But in this case um, I won't do that and what I will do is I will apply everything so it will now convert them into my raw files into positives. Because the things, the reason I'm not doing this is because I want to show you something. Because some of you might want to have the border, the film border in uh, in your photo, which is something um, you can do with a, a negative supply holder because it will allow you that. Um, and then you can pretty much after you converted them, just bring the borders back in. Again, I will just do it on this one here. I think that's enough and then now let's get back to um, negative lab pro control n so now what I will do is I will convert them all into tiff files in a separate folder and now let's wait And that's pretty handy because um, in the meantime, if you have to convert like, I don't know, dozens of, uh, of negatives, then it's pretty nice. So just get a cu cup of coffee or just go to the bathroom and when you come back, it's all done. Let's hop back to the library module. And as you can see here, there's now a new folder and this folder contains my converted negatives. Uh, let me first... Turn this one around, this one as well. And these photos I shot in uh, Korea. Maybe you remember uh, the video um, I made. And okay, let's check out this one first. I think it already looks pretty good, to be honest. Um, maybe bring down the exposure a little bit. Let's bump the contrast just slightly, maybe. Yeah, that's pretty much. Let's see what the auto white balance does. Oh, it's pretty spot on. Okay. No, it can't sample here. Maybe here. Yep. Nah. 
before was better. So let's bump up um, the saturation just a little bit. And yeah, I think this was shot on Portra 800, by the way. Um, but I think already it looks pretty good. So um, nothing to complain here. Maybe um, down here you can see it's uh, the frame is not really black. It's a little bit faded. So what we can do here to compensate is uh, this gradient filter. Let's reset that and bump maybe the blacks a little bit. So yeah, right here. Okay, that's pretty much it. Uh, first image, done. Second one. Okay, this looks a little, maybe a little bit cool. Let's bring down the exposure slightly and maybe let's warm it up a little. Yeah. And to be honest, I think it looks already pretty good. Um, this one, okay, yeah. Maybe let's, let's try auto white balance here. Okay, not too bad. Uh, let's bump up the contrast, maybe that's adjust the tint slightly. I mean, this is up to you how you want to uh, adjust it. I mean, in, in the end, um, it's personal preference and there's no right or wrong about this. And maybe a little bit more of contrast. Let's see where it's, uh, that's fine. Maybe a little bit more shadow detail here. And I think that's pretty much it, uh, nothing that needs to be done here. Okay, this image, of course, the white balance is completely off. Let's sample the shirt here and it already looks pretty good, to be honest. Um, let's bring up the exposure a little bit. Um, maybe let's add a little bit of contrast and let's uh, just bring up the shadows just slightly. And to be honest, I think already it looks pretty good. Uh, what you could do is uh, bring down maybe the sky that, because the exposure is a little hot here, so maybe let's bring this down a little bit with the gradient. Uh, maybe like this and reset this again. Um, maybe let's bring down the highlights a little bit and the exposure just a little bit like this. And of course it will also apply it onto her face. Uh, that's not something we don't want, so let's get rid of this with the brush. All right. Okay, cool. That's pretty much it. Um, I think this looks pretty good. So yeah, simple. Very simple, like I told you before. And now let's try uh, to bring out this image here because it's an X-Pen shot. Like I've said before, it's not ideal to use um, the holder for X-Pen, but it can work. And it's actually, it's not bad because what I did, I shot two frames and I will now stitch them together. And let's see, okay. That's a good thing about Lightroom. It's pretty easy to do this, photo merge and panorama. And now let's see. Auto settings, Turn. we will turn this off. And as you can see, it, it's stitched together and it will create a TIFF file. And here it is. That's the expand shot. I mean, like I said, it's not bad. Um, it worked out pretty well. So what we will do now is crop this down and convert it. And all right, let's see. I already have, this is for expand. Maybe like this. Yeah, we can bring in the borders a little bit later. Ah, forgot to sample the white balance. Okay. All right. I think around, this should be all right. Okay, let's bring up a negative lip row, control N. And let's convert the negative. Oh no, uh, I told you before that I will turn it into a, a TIFF file, but it's not true. It will turn the uh, panorama, the file will be a DNG, which, which is pretty much a raw file, which is pretty handy. All right, uh, here we are. Um, that is okay, looks pretty good, actually. Uh, let's apply. 
And now what we can do now is bring in the borders again. So for you that want borders in the frame, maybe around here. Yeah. The bottom slightly more. Um, maybe a little bit more. Oh, come on. All right, I think this looks pretty good. Um, now let's get back to Negative Lab Pro. And now let's turn this into a, a TIFF file. Because the thing is, if you adjust um, the files without um, converting into a TIFF, then you have one problem because uh, all the sliders are inverted, um, which can mess with your head. And that's why I usually um, convert them to TIFF files because then it's um, the same process as always. So now here's my TIFF file. And as you can see, there's uh, it's pretty sharp. The file is pretty sharp. Um, there's no sharpening applied, but it's already pretty sharp. There's some dust in here. Um, I could, yeah, let me just quickly show you how I get uh, rid of the dust here. and. What I do is I open it up in uh, Photoshop. All right. Use the profile that is in there. Okay. Come on. Okay, what we do now is get rid of the dust. It's better to use a mouse for this than the trackpad, but it also works here. Just to give you an idea, I will not remove all the dust here. That would take way too long. Just these here. So you can see what's going on. Okay, let's uh, bring it back to... Ah, uh, no, that's the one thing, uh, I think. Okay, let's bring it back. Okay, back in Lightroom again. And... Right away, what I can see is uh, it's a little bit cool. This is, uh, by the way, was um, I think it was Superior 400 or something like that. Um, maybe bring up the contrast a little bit. Highlights down, maybe a little bit shadow detail back in. And maybe let's get the contrast in again. And what also sometimes uh, can work pretty well is the dehaze slider. If you just add a little bit, it gives a little... It adds a little bit of micro contrast, which can look really good. And as you can see, it's really, really sharp. This was shot wide open at F4 on the X-Pen. Uh, That's pretty good. And one benefit of stitching the image instead of um, taking a single frame is when what you can see here. So the resolution is huge. Now you got a huge file, which is pretty nice. It's more than 20 megapixels uh, for an X-Pen shot. That should be more than plenty. And yeah. That's about it and that is how I convert my negatives. And as you can see, it's very, very simple and also this software is awesome um, and it got better and better over time. And if you're interested, I will also leave a link in the description box down below. And yeah, guys, as always, um, that's the video for today and it was good fun filming this. And thank you, thanks again for um, Negative Supply for sending this over and don't forget to pick up my Zine 28 um, with no shipping cost for another two days. And yeah, if you liked the video, as always, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And we will see each other very soon in the next video. Until then, auf Wiedersehen.